Hey folks, welcome back. Uh, I just wrapped up the match that uh, I just posted, which is the uh, match that we lost with the two Hurricane Light Cruisers. I'm thinking about building a variant of that fleet that has one Light Cruiser that has a bunch of Hurricanes and then something else besides. So I'm going to do a little bit of fiddling in the fleet editor. I'm just throwing out this, throwing this out there as a little bonus content. Let's get building. Okay, uh, we also need to give these names, by the way. Let's do that first, and then we'll make the new fleet. So, what name do we want to give this? Um, I had an idea for this, actually. Let me... Um, I saved it on my phone. Let me give me one second to pull it up. Let's see. Okay, um, this is going to be the Rita Levy Montalcini... Um, and I learned about her on Facebook. Uh, she lived from 1909 to 2012, and uh, she went to university despite uh, her father forbidding it. Um, she lost her job in 1938 as a research assistant because she was an Italian Jew. She, uh, Despite losing her job, she continued her research using her bedroom as a laboratory. Um, and then she fled and lived underground in 1943 when Germany invaded. Um, so she's a um, famous uh, Nobel Prize winning neurobiologist who is being honored for Holocaust Remembrance Week. So uh, this is not going to be the week that that is posted, um, that this video is posted, but uh, I want to honor that person. So I'm showing this in there. Um, I don't have an idea for this one yet. Let's look up some top scientists. Let's see. Uh, women in STEM. Um, well, this is an organization. Let's see. Um, Lillian Gilbreth. Now, Lillian Muller Gilbreth was an American psychologist and industrial engineer at the turn of the 20th century. She was an expert in efficiency and organizational psychology, principles of which she applied not only as a management consultant for major corporations, but also to her household of 12 children, as chronicled in the book Cheaper by the Dozen. Her long list of firsts includes first female commencement speaker at the University of California, first female engineering professor at Purdue, and first woman elected to the National Academy of Engineering. This is from um, the Obama White House archives. Um, let's go ahead and throw that up there. Okay, so these are our two, we've officially christened our two ships. And, um, let's go ahead and make a variant fleet. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to put in it yet. For now, I'm just going to call it, um, 3K Missile CL Variant. 3K Missile CL Variant. And then we'll rename it something better later. So I'm going to delete one of these two cruisers. So we have one Hurricane Missile Cruiser, and we have like 1,500 points to mess around with. And I believe this Missile Cruiser, I think they both had the adaptive radar and all that kind of stuff. This has adaptive parallax. I don't think they were completely identical. Let me actually check that real quick before we go and build the new one. I want to make sure, we, I want to make sure I know what we're removing here. Uh, oh, we have the listing here. So... Five launchers, Mark 64, two jammers, a PDT, only one PDT, and the VLS. Mark 64, PDT, Aurora. So the second one is an Aurora. In addition to the other stuff, I think there's other stuff that's not listed that's significant. Let's take a look. So I'm looking down at the modules here. This has a track correlator, parallax radar, and a single adaptive. This thing has... A, a reactor, 500 drive, supplementary radio and amplifiers, which is for transmitting sensor data. It's got three adaptives with a parallax, four adaptives with a parallax. So it's really meant to cut through jamming effectively and get a lock, um, which unfortunately didn't really work for us in the last match uh, very well. But we did manage to get through a little bit and we got some damage out, so it's all right. Um, I think... So we got one jammer, and we got all of this sensor equipment. I think that's okay. Um, so let's delete that one. And then 3K. So the reason I went back and did this again was because I wanted to keep the 
cruiser that has all the extra sensor equipment on it. I want to make sure that we did that. Um, so now we got a little bit less than 1,500 points to play with. Maybe we'll, uh, it does have a shrine to Bryce. There's not a module for that, unfortunately, so we had to fit it in the CIC. We also have a backup in the DC locker in case it gets destroyed. Um, I think it'd be cool to put in a couple of beam destroyers. Let's try that. Right next to the open com watch nuke button, yeah. <laughs> That's how you make an offering, in fact. And not enough crew, low on power. Okay, I'm just trying to get a ballpark idea of how much these two things are going to cost. Let's figure out the power situation first. Uh, for power, let's throw in another reactor, because that's actually a pretty cheap option. Interesting note about the PD. I've noticed that the... The PD coverage areas are very different for di for different classes of ships, and it kind of makes a lot of sense to me, I think, to have like multiple ship classes in your fleet so that their PD coverage can overlap in useful ways. It's like the I think the light cruisers have the best PD coverage of any smaller mid-sized ship because they have like angles like this and like this, and then they've got angles down here and down here. So they have these kind of diagonals going on. The destroyers basically cover everything, but only on you know 180 degrees on each side so i think they're a good complement to the cruisers which sort of have a bit of a blind spot uh i think do they i guess if you attack them from directly directly from the rear there's a bit of a blind spot there but they're actually the cruisers probably have the best coverage out of everything um destroyers only have it on the side so it'll be a complement to the cruisers but they're not really good enough to have complete PD coverage on their own. So we got the power situation figured out. We need crew. I like to put the crew up front here to provide a little bit of extra armor because this the crew aren't going to be in here when they're fighting a battle. This is just where they sleep and stuff like that. So um, it's basically just an extra component that can be used to shield other components. Um, and it provides the ability for them to sleep somewhere. So they might lose their uh, like locket or whatever that they have stored away, but the ship will survive so i'm okay with it let's see um micro reactor here we go okay so we have two viable beam destroyers how much do these each cost 325 that's like nothing right i mean that's great that's fantastic we could just crank out like 10 beam destroyers at this rate let's just uh well not 10 obviously but So we wanted to put nothing else on. We could have four beam destroyers. I think let's have three beam destroyers and have them be a little more capable. I think that'll work out really well. Mm, what do we want to do with them, though? I think we need... They each need at least one... They need some damage control, right? They have nothing there. Nothing for that right now. I'm going to put the CIC... Can I put it here? I can. I'm going to put the CIC back there, because I think that's kind of the most shielded area of the destroyer. Um, that's also where the CIC graphic is, so it just kind of works out that way. I'm going to delete these other two for now, because I'm going to recopy this once we've finished tinkering with it. Um, I could have... How much is the CIC? It's only 10 points, but times one compounding. We're going to put another one down there, because I think it's cheaper than having a really tough CIC. And these things are going to be brawling in melee combat, so I think it makes a lot of sense. We could consider giving these missiles as well, but I would probably not want to give them more hurricanes because that just makes more of our firepower vulnerable to that one jammer type that gave us so much trouble. I think this is going to be um, a blanket jammer. What's our power look like? 86%. I think this is also going to be a reactor. There we go. Want to have plenty of extra power because these things are going to get damaged and we want to make sure that they can function while they're damaged and they don't just lose all their systems spontaneously 
I think let's put a DC locker here. And maybe somewhere we need a magazine, I think. Because we're going to put in a little bit of PD for these guys. What are we up to now? 440? I guess the magazine could be like here. We want a reinforced magazine. Let's do reinforced magazines. I don't think we're going to have a ton of ammo on this thing. And I do want it to be uh, resistant to damage since we're only... Actually, this is super expensive, though. That costs half as much, so let's go with the cheaper one. We don't want these things to be a lot of points. Um, okay, and I think the magazine is going to be secondary stuff. Like, we could think about putting torpedoes on these things, but they're also command-guided, so I kind of don't want to do that. This up here is going to be their chaff launcher, which every ship has to have, basically, unless it's, like, a super stealthy scout. Let's say... 16 chaff. We might add, we might fill this out as if you have a couple extra points left at the end. And then I want to put PD on the sides. I'm thinking we have too much power demand already for Aurora's to be a good idea. What does this guy's PD situation look like? He's got an Aurora on the left side and a rebound on the right. This guy, I think, is going to have an Aurora on the right side. And a rebound on the left. Okay, and then I think this could be like a PCC if we have the crew for it, which we do. And then we need some ammo, and then I need to fill all these two mounts, I think. We could give them more Mark 64 cannons. That wouldn't be terrible. Let's give them some Mark 64s. So there's a Mark 64. There's a Mark 64. Those are pretty cheap, and they can do a lot of damage over time. And then this magazine is going to have some AP shells. Um, some HERPF shells for killing Corvettes and stuff like that. Oops, not 3,000, though. It's a bit much. Uh, let's do 500, 500, and uh, flak rounds for the PD. Let's say 500 rounds for that too. Actually, this is in increments of 75, so that would be, let's say 600 for that. We could go to 525. Okay, so this is a little less than 700 points. So now we can only fit two destroyers instead of three. Is that good enough? These also don't have good sensors or anything like that. But we do have four jammers. We have three jammers in our fleet. Just probably... I think I want a fourth jammer. What do we give up for that? We could bring an E-War Corvette, maybe. Let's see... Jammer. That's too many points. Should we... Let's ditch the Aurora here. Maybe we just ditch all the Auroras because we don't have a use for... Her. Yeah, let's just do away with the Auroras because it gives us more power budget to work with. Um, I think the rebounds are going to be okay. much as I like the Auroras, they're also very expensive. Um, okay, and then we're going to delete these and recreate them again. Okay, so we're at, what does it say, 2700? I forget, having this can be good for capping as well. What's the problem here? We have not enough crew to operate all systems. One or more weapons must be assigned to groups. Okay, let's move the PCC down here. Maybe 
Maybe we don't need the PCC actually. Let's just put in another birthing for now. There we go. Weapons not assigned to groups. Okay. Let's um let me fix that real quick. Mark 64s. Saving this. Okay, and then this guy wants to have a jammer. Twenty-nine seventy-eight. So we have a couple more points to play with here. We could give this guy a VLS twenty-three, maybe. Oh, this guy has one hundred eleven percent power. He needs some help with that first. Hold on. So this is going to be a um, PCC. Actually, we could give him a whiplash drive, maybe. That might be enough by itself. Nope, not, it's not enough. Too much. Okay, this is under his power budget, so we can have that extra jammer. But it's over our point budget slightly. We can eliminate individual units of chaff here. Yeah, this does not have enough crew, so it's going to be over budget. I think we can put crew here, technically. Oh no, that doesn't cost us anything. I guess the first one's free, is that right? Yeah, okay. Okay, so this is our new fleet. We've got uh, beams for when our missile cruiser gets rushed. And this has got three, four or five missile launchers, so we can launch waves of 10 hurricanes at a time and provide beam support indefinitely when the hurricanes run out. I like that idea. I think I'm going to give these guys... Do I want to give these guys a little more ammo? That's what I'm thinking about. I'm going to give up two chaff on the one cruiser in order to give these guys a little bit more ammo. So let's go for another 100 rounds. Oop, another 50 rounds here. And another 50 rounds here. Okay, we're gonna hope that's enough. And I think we want all these guys to be in a single formation, probably. Um, at some point, we'll probably wanna split the Corvette off and do it, have it do its own thing. I wanna start them off together. Um, what am I doing here? There we go. Okay, that is going to be guided by the cruiser. Let's have them be in kind of a triangle initially. And this guy is, exists only for jamming purposes. So I'm just going to stick him kind of in the back, I think. That kind of looks like TF Ash, doesn't it? I feel like TF Ash is more dangerous, but the Hurricanes are pretty good, so I don't know. Okay, I hope that's a good fleet. Let's find out. Let's uh, give the fleet a proper name, too, so I remember what it is. Um, so this is going to be... 3K Missile CL 2 Beam DD 64s um, GM Corvette. Okay. So that's it for the fleet building. Uh, I'm going to end the video there, and then we're going to do another video in which we use this fleet in a match. So I will see you then.